now let us explain a few things okay now in this circuit uh, you need this float switch and uh, you need these buttons and a selector switch and the main component here is the selector switch it's what we are talking about today now this selector switch as the name goes it has three positions in it it has the off position which it has a hop off position which could be in this line then if you turn it here that's one position and then that's the second position so if it's in the middle that's a neutral okay all right now uh, let's just understand where we need to use this uh, okay now I've uh, I tried to start uh, my circuit and you you saw what happened I one time used a fourth switch and the other and one time used these buttons now take a situation whereby uh, you have a pump uh, and this fourth switch is in overhead tank okay and uh, of course overhead tank is maybe on your roof top or it might be uh, you know suspended uh, some meters from the ground okay using towers so you have this first switch in there and it's the only one that starts the contactor but just imagine if you need to maintain or if a foot switch has a problem and you need to repress it and you need water at the same time so what do you do okay so that's why you need to put these extra buttons on your panel so in that you use this selector switch now to select between these two switching positions we have one switching position is in the tank and we have the other switching position on the panel but you have to use because they cannot work both of them at the same time okay it's one a time so you use a selector switch to switch between them okay that's what we saw in our uh, that's what we saw in our introduction okay now as usual you have a contactor you have an overload then you have a, um this you have uh this is a and you have a float switch okay but this of course can work uh with other stuffs it might be a level sensor just a real sensor a level sensor uh anything like that you know uh it might be uh it might be uh electrical valves okay yeah anything like that it can still go with this circuit okay all right now i want to show you a circuit and then you you get to know because it's very good to learn and understand the circuit okay now in this circuit hope you're able to see it very well now in this circuit the one thing you see is you have this little guy here and this guy is could be your fuse or your breaker because in your control you must always fuse it or you have to put a breaker for protection okay now uh, you have an overload here this is symbol of overload that's what we always use so which is this your overload we've done that several times check out a video the link in the description now this guy here is uh this selector switch and the selector switch has got two open contacts and the two open contacts are just these push button is the green the start push button is you only get to these and then you hook them on this plate okay now you're able to see they are normally open both of them so the difference between uh this push and then the selector switch is that the push is spring loaded okay you only push once and you release and it goes back okay but uh, the selector switch it is fixed if you turn it in one direction it will stay fixed you see so one side will be in and the other side will be out okay so th th that's they do exactly similar jobs but this is in it is fixed and then this is spring rotted okay all right now here as i was telling you it is this okay and uh, we have two normally open contacts which is this so this is the selector switch now we have two lines you've seen we have this line here that are coming out from one side of the selector switch through a float switch and then to the coil 
So the float switch is connected in series with the coil, okay? Because now it acts as a switch, just a typical switch the one you use in your house, okay? Uh, the other one goes, takes the other line, okay? And this is the self-holding uh, circuit. We've done that before. We've done the self-holding circuit, how to make it. We've done the start delta starter. All those, they use the same method, this the self-holding. So you know how to do that, okay? So uh, from that side, you go through the normal stop, and then you make a holding circuit. You go through the start, and then you got your coil, okay? So you see now, they are both open. And, and if you look here, if you look here, you see, let me, okay. Now, there, if you look there, in there, they are both open, but if I turn one side, you see one green stuff move like this side. And then when I turn like this, the other one also moves, okay? You see? Yeah, like that. So when you turn one side, one side closes, and then we use the button to start our pump. When you turn the other side, this opens and this closes, then we are able to control our pump using the float switch. Okay? And then, this is a coil. A coil is inside the contactor. And then these are contacts where we use self-holding, which are, are these. Okay? Alright, now, let's wire it practical as you fall, and then we see what results we achieve. Now, I've already showed you the circuit. You can pause the video, look at it, and that's it. Okay? All right. Now, the first thing you need to do is the first thing you need to do is to connect uh, your overload. Okay. So you got to open here and then put. Okay. Then the other side of the overload also. Now, this wire from the overload will enter our selector switch. That's the first thing, okay? So, you open our selector switch. Now, because we have two uh, contacts that we're going to use, so we have to short. We have to loop here. here also okay now we have two contacts here one will go to the front switch and one will use the buttons so now let's begin with this okay now remember red start red stop green start so we need to feed red first That's it. So you have to loop this side you, uh, between uh, one side of red and then the one side of green. Okay. Now you need one wire. So you need to connect this side. This will help you to hold your circuit, and this side will help you to start to give you the initial start of the circuit. Okay. So let us connect this side first. And then this is your holding line. You have to connect it here. Okay, make sure it's tight. So we have one side here. This will give us our initial start. So you're gonna connect here. So this is the other side of the start. And then you put this one here and you get this a piece of wire. You sh connect it here such that it is able to supply our coil. Okay. So this, you see, now will now enter here. All right. 
now let's bring in our float switch now the float switch is now the other easiest part okay now the remaining here contact of the selector switch we'll just put here one side of float switch because remember the float switch is connected in series with the coil okay and it is in there now this will go directly to the coil so there are two wires here Now, one last thing you have to do is to connect the neutral, okay? So, the neutral is here. This is A2. So, you put your wire here. So, let's power it up. Now, you fold our circuit. You have fold our circuit very well. Uh, our float switch, just from one side of the selector switch here okay and then through the float switch to the coil that's what we've done through the float switch to the coil okay and then the other side of the selector switch we've made a self-holding circuit through the stop button to the self-holding and also through uh the start and then to the coil okay so very simple circuit okay all right, now, let's see what happens. Now, I need us to hold this in this position, okay? So, let's see. Now, here, it's in neutral, so we turn it one side, and then let's see. Now, we're using the buttons, and now our circuit is able to start, okay? Now, you switched off. You can start. Put it off. Now, we want to use the float switch because now the float switch is here. You see? It can't engage the circuit. But if we turn the selector switch to the side of automatic or to the side of the float switch, it will work. You see? So this guy here is going to be in your overhead tank. And then this guy is just going to be on your panel with this. Okay. Now, if it is in neutral or zero, it won't start even if you press here, even if you operate your float switch. Okay. Now, this circuit is very much suitable for you to operate your pump. Okay. Some of these things are very cheap. You can, you know, have a full wiring of uh, your panel and then you're good to go. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate that uh, you're watching the videos. And thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate that. If you've not subscribed yet, please push that subscribe button and push the bell notification. So that every time uh, we upload a video, we notify you. And that has been Electrica. Have a blessed one.